you look at these people who are on plant-based high fiber diets, their gut looks ridiculous. They're so bloated. It's insane. Like I, I have zero bloating. I don't even fart because it just made so much sense when you were like on the podcast, you were saying, have you ever found like a bit of meat in your poop? <laughs> I was like, no, I, I found quinoa. I found freaking corn and I've had bowel movements the size of Texas when I'm eating very fibrous rich diet at, at this point. It's just very regular. It's once a day, if that, and small, like there's minimal waste. All right. Good morning, folks. Uh, we've got Josh here today to speak with us. Thanks, Josh. Where are you located, man? Hey, I'm in uh, I'm in Richland County, Ohio, kind of in the Mansfield area, if you know where that's at. I do not. It's one of the Ohio's. I've only been to Cincinnati one. No, Cleveland one time. That's my only experience in Ohio. So. Well, you're missing you're missing some good cornfields, man. I'm missing some good corn. I know I know they've got good chili apparently in Cincinnati. They've got the skyline chili, which I've heard a lot about. Yeah, I, think I actually yeah, tried yeah. that years ago. So anyway, so you're a, you're a uh, you're a chiropractor, is that correct? Yes, sir. Oh, I am. How long have you been doing that for? Well, I have been a uh, board certified chiropractor since June of 2021, yeah. and I'm uh, certified to practice in the state of Ohio. Pretty much, have been doing that in the Richland County area since um, June of 21, like I said. Okay. So relative, relatively new to it. Okay. So yeah. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about your just background in general, if you don't mind. Yeah, sure thing, man. Um, so uh, let's see here. <clears throat> as far as how all my problems started, uh, what I dealt with mainly was eczema. Um, that was pretty much eczema, allergies, asthma. That was something that I've kind of had problems with my entire life. It wasn't something that I ever received any uh, information on that I could improve with diet. I never, my, my mom was a nurse when I was growing up. Um, she never really practiced much. Uh, she was a stay-at-home mom as I was, uh, as I was being raised. But her opinions have changed on a lot of this stuff uh, because she was very medical-minded back when I was, you know, when you're the firstborn, you're kind of the guinea pig. I, I had been diagnosed with asthma when I was about five years old, and I pretty much had that my entire life. And pretty much just very high levels of allergies uh, that I had dealt with really, uh, again, since I was about five years old. Um, and they were very severe at times. Uh, my brother's got it even worse than I do. He's actually had a lung collapse on him. Um, but I was I was kind of close to that when I was younger, but I've grown out of it a little bit. I still struggled with it as I was as I uh, got older. Uh, and when I got into chiropractic school, that's when all these newer problems started showing up like eczema. Uh, I had little bouts with it, but it wasn't anything severe like it had turned into um, this this past March. It, it got pretty severe. Um, uh Pretty much that's, that's kind of my, that's, that's what I dealt with for the entirety of, of my life. And then, uh, I was able to find the carnivore diet uh, and I was able to kind of turn things around. Interesting. A lot of, you know, there's a lot of kids that, you know, they grow up and they're always kind of rashy. Like you have babies that are just real rashy babies, you know, and it's just right. kind of like if, if it's just something that about them or something in their environment that they're exposed to probably, right. Uh, that lead to that. And then, you know, there's all these associated things with it, you know, often asthma and eczema often go together. They're both considered autoimmune conditions, which right. uh, a lot of people would be surprised to find out. I was when I first found that out, even as a physician, I didn't realize asthma was autoimmune, but I, I'm same, subsequently same, man. I was, I had no idea it was autoimmune. What, uh, you know, in chiropractic education, are they, I mean, mm -hmm. is something, is asthma and eczema something on the, on the curriculum that you deal with much? Because I mean, obviously most people uh, are familiar yes. with the musculoskeletal. Yeah, so we, yeah. we had a lot of immunology, lots of pathology. Um, it's about, it's about a four year degree. Really, you mm -hmm. go through pretty much the regimen of, uh, of medical school without the mm -hmm. pharmacology. Mm -hmm. um, so your hours are kind of similar in that sense, but you don't have the residency or the the pharmacology that you go through mm -hmm. when you have a, uh, a medical degree. So we still, we went through a lot of that stuff. You know, you kind of go through the motions when you learn that, you try to test to get done with it. But I've learned a lot more as, you know, as I've gotten out of school and kind of applied it to myself. I, so through chiropractic school, I kind of found out if I fasted, 
that my eczema would go away. And that was always a really good temporary, a temporary fix, but it got to the point where I was so skinny and I almost looked malnourished because I had fasted so much. My eczema was gone, but I felt like absolute garbage. So uh, that led to some pretty bad circulation problems down in my feet. Uh, I got to the point where my feet were just always cold. I mean, I lived, I had lived in Georgia for five years. It never got cold there uh, or it, it hardly gets cold compared to Ohio, but my feet were always freezing. So I, and they were turning purple. So I, I never knew, I never put that together as being like a circulation issue that I could fix uh, with diet. But after being on carnivore for, I think it was probably a month, maybe two months, I noticed like, man, I just feel really warm. My feet don't get cold like they did. They're not numb. I'm trying to think of some other stuff. There was like other abstract things that I noticed too. I never really had digestive problems, but I did it mainly for the skin problems. So, I mean, are you from, I guess, life chiropractic school? Were you familiar with that? That's, is that where you went or is that where? So there's two, there's two lives. Uh, there's one out in uh, California, mm -hmm. um, that's Life West, and then there's Life University down in Georgia. So I, that's where I was at. Yeah, I'm familiar. When I used to play rugby, I remember Life had a scholarship. A scholarship they had quite yeah, a good, quite man, a good they rugby, got a killer rugby a team. A good rugby team. I remember back from the days I played, we would play, a lot of my friends that played were, were actually chiropractors. Um, how yeah. bad was the eczema? I mean, did you have like broken skin, bleeding, or I mean, how, how bad did it, did it get for you? I'll see if I can actually, so... Am I able to pull a picture up on this? That was at its most severe. Yeah. Um, it that so I had found the carnivore diet, uh, like a lot of people through the kind of the Saladino method. I got to give him a little bit of credit, but this was after one month of doing that. It was not that bad. Uh, and then I I think the fruit, the the fructose that I was taking in, and then the fiber as well. It was just. It was feeding that bacterial overgrowth yeah. that I had going on. Yeah. Um, this had all started to, uh, it, you know, it, it was always on my fingers growing up, but it, it never got to the point where it it got up onto my arms or anything like that. So it was on my arms, on my neck. So this was, uh, so the timing of this was, this is prior to any sort of dietary adjustments. Is this? Th this was after, so the when, when I took this picture, this was after one month of doing the meat and fruit. Oh, the fruit which, version. Okay. okay. Yes. Yeah. The, <laughs> the fruity version. Right. Uh, okay. And so I ended up, uh, I ended up, I, I was like, man, why the heck is this getting worse? I couldn't, you know, I, I was experimenting at that time with just cutting everything out. I yeah. think I had, I had just done like apples and bananas, okay. but, um, was yeah, that was I that was, was that painful for you? It looks painful. Yeah, it was at the point where I like I couldn't sleep at night. I had hypothyroid symptoms as well. Like I was just cold. I was shivering. Okay. Lost my libido. Like I just I didn't really want. I, I was almost depressed, honestly. So did you get any? I, I, did you get any benefits from going to the meat and fruit version? I mean, was there any any? No, no, no. no benefits? This, okay. this got worse after okay. I did that. Okay. So all of this started. I was trying to do a preemptive. Uh, this was off of a holistic cleanse that all of this actually started. What does that so mean? So if you know anything about standard process, they have a bunch of cleanses. Yeah, I, don't, um, I don't know. What is tell, Describe the holistic cleanse. It sounds suspect to me. But uh, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it is. <laughs> um, so it's a uh, standard process is a big brand. Um, it's basically, it, unfortunately, the holistic medicine side of things is kind of taken a a turn into the big pharma method where you have a symptom, you need to take a supplement. And then once you take that supplement, that that's going to make it better. But I was probably on 10 different supplements at this time. I had done the cleanse for the full 21 days. And it was basically like you're plant-based for 10 days. Then you throw in lean meats. They want you to eat like chicken. You're doing like these protein shakes along with like a hundred different supplements. So that really messed me up. So were you worse with, so this is the worst you were though, but this is even worse. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And then I, then I tried to fix it with the meat fruit okay. and that made it even worse. Got it. So it okay. was just compounded on, on itself. Okay. How much fruit were you eating? I mean, what was, what was it looking like? Um, I would say I'd eat probably two apples a day, maybe like 
three or four bananas. And then I found out I was horribly allergic to bananas. I don't know. It it was kind of a, it was a wake up call for me as far as supplementation and being careful, like what to supplement people on, Okay. because it's, it's very, uh, it's very implied in chiropractic school that you're supposed to supplement along with what you're doing in your care. But a lot of people have, they can have bad reactions to the supplements that you're giving them. What is the thought, I mean, behind supplementation? Is it, is it this the, it's impossible to get nutrition from food these days and we have to supplement right. it, the I, food, the system is what, so degraded. Like, is that the thought? Yeah. And that's what I've come to kind of learn is like, like if you think about us ancestrally, which is why this diet makes so much sense. If you think about us ancestrally, like when the heck did we ever, even like a hundred years ago, did we have supplements? And we didn't have any stuff like this. Like there was no autoimmune conditions, hardly. So it was very few and far between. So I cut everything out and I, I found your podcast with Joe Rogan, like many have. Uh, and that's when I was like, all right, I'll just do meat. Uh, I'll do meat, salt, water. And I stuck primarily with red meat. Uh, I noticed bacon kind of flared me up. It still does. Uh, never, I never had an issue with that growing up, but uh, I noticed after this, I was, I had a, a lot of problems with bacon. Um, so I, I mainly just eat twice a day. I probably put down, I, I'd say two to three pounds of meat each day. Uh, and I, I bought a whole cow back in, uh, August. So I'm about halfway done with that. But yeah, I stuck primarily with red meat. And, and so the result of that, so dropping the, the fruit and the bananas, the apples, the supplements, I guess, maybe, um, yeah, what do we have? What, what happened to that? Do you have a follow-up photo or working? Is it yes. Uh, well, it kind of, yeah, I have a, I didn't take a screenshot of my follow-up photo. I'll show you my arms here though. I can, I can kind of get up here and show you what, uh, what they look like now, but they're pretty much yeah, 100% like, better. They look normal arms. And what, what was the time, what was the time, uh, frame that that occurred in from the, from the worst to the best? Uh, so that, that picture was taken around the end of March. I noticed within the week, maybe two weeks. I mean, I took a bunch of pictures in my hands because, uh, I knew it would work. Like I just, I had seen a bunch of people's success stories with it. So I was like, you know, this, I want to document this pretty well. So I had taken a lot of pictures and within a week, you could tell the inflammation had, had gone down. I'd say within a month, it was almost completely resolved. I tried to get off of it because I'm like, ah, this is pretty restrictive. And I never realized I had some shoulder pain. Like at the end of the day, I, I usually see about 20 to 30 patients a day. But by the end of the day, I noticed my back would just be dull and achy normally. Um, and this was only after six months of doing it. So, you know, I, I don't have any arthritis yet by any means, uh, but it would just be dull and achy. My shoulders would hurt. They'd be clicking and popping. Specifically, my left one, I had an injury to it. Yeah, oh, you're saying so the act of actually doing chiropractic manipulations and examining patients was yeah. causing causing this stuff, for, and you've been doing yeah, it for six months. Okay, you're basically you're MMA wrestling people all day. And uh, and so you noticed that one away as well with it with a diet. Yes, right? the low back pain, the shoulder pain. I, I had pretty consistent headaches as well. Maybe like once on the rare occasion, I have one now. Uh, but they are, I mean, I, I hardly ever have them. So that's always been a thing too. I, I always had headaches. You mentioned some asthma. Is that, were you medicated for asthma? Were you on an inhaler, carotosteroid yes. inhaler or albuterol or something like that? And and what's yeah, going on with that now? Yeah, I was on a inhaled corticosteroid. I was doing like Singulair mm-hmm. for, this was growing up. So I did Singulair growing up. Um, I always did like the uh, the preventative, the, the one they want, to, want you to take nightly. Did those. And then I would say after high school or maybe in high school, it got less severe, but I still had it. You know, if I would be around any of my triggers, like a dusty environment or a dog like that, that, that's what really set it off. Even being around that now, I don't notice that I, maybe I'll sneeze here and there, but I don't have asthma attacks anymore. So especially when I'm very strict with it, with the diet. Yeah. And you said you, you, you know, you did it for a period of time. Things got better. You said, well, I, I, this is, this is too restrictive for me. I, I'm going to try to add things back in, I guess. So what did you try right. to add back in and what happened to you? Well, for some stupid reason, I keep wanting to add fruit in mm-hmm. because I think there was just this big carb addiction that I had mm-hmm. carbohydrates. I mean, that was, 
that was what why I wanted to eat that fruit because it but that my gut bacteria was screaming at me because it was dying. And when I when I ate that stuff, it would uh, it would help supplement that that bad bacteria. So it would just keep it alive. I just kept wanting to add fruit in or, you know, have the occasional dessert. I can't do that because I, I just know I, f- I feel too good right now. When you do those things, I mean, do you, do you notice your inflammation comes back or what is uh, what is yes. the trigger there? Yes. Like I, on Thanksgiving, like I had a little bit of pie. I had an asthma attack that night. My skin has been a little bit flared up just for the past two weeks, uh, just a little bit here and there. But usually when I eat something I'm not supposed to, it's about a week until it goes away or it doesn't, you know, I, I'm not itching at it or anything like that. So I, I'd say when I cheat that that's the only time I really notice those symptoms come back. But it's, I, I've been, I've been, I listen to your videos every morning. So you're very inspirational as far as keeping me on the straight and narrow, man. It's well, thank you. It's interesting. You know, like when you mentioned itching, because I, I just think about it, I just never hardly ever itch anymore. It's kind of weird. It's like, I remember before you yeah. kind of be scratching and, and now I just, it's just never happens anymore. It's just, it's kind of, yes, it's kind of weird. Right. Some of these weird totally. things you just don't think about as you're scratching your face. Right. <laughs> well, and people, people always on these forums yeah. or like in comment sections, I'll read and they're like, uh, you know, they're saying how they just list some random symptom that they notice. I'm like, hey, I had that too. And, yeah. you know, it, it totally is gone now. Let me ask you I mean, a little bit about chiropractic because obviously I went, yes, through an, I went through an allopathic pathway as an orthopedic surgeon. And, you know, obviously pharmaceutical yeah. companies very much have their tentacles within that system. So it's kind of refreshing to see you, you, you know, you kind of are away from that. How much is nutrition thought of and, and taught in chiropractic uh, college? Uh, it's actually, you actually get quite a few hours of nutrition in chiropractic school, albeit most of it's incorrect. Mm -hmm. Now that I, you know, now that I've come to find this way of eating, they still pass on the tropes that like, oh, meat and red meat is, it'll raise your blood pressure or red meat and fruit will give you gout type of deal, or just red meat by itself gives you gout. There's still that, that underlying, uh, just incorrectiveness of that of that nutrition program, but they were still, they were attempting to teach people like, Hey, you can fix some of these problems with nutrition. Mm -hmm. So I I always appreciated that because they they came at it from that angle because everybody's got their own opinion on, on nutrition. And that's why, you know, I didn't like it too much until I found this way because it's, it's very extreme, but it, it works. Like it, it just does. It's, it's amazing how, uh, how big of a turnaround that, that I've made on it. Um, and if you'd have told me when I was in chiropractic school that, you know, an all meat diet is going to fix my problems, I'd, I'd have called you crazy. Yeah. I mean, I would have called myself crazy, you know, 10 years ago, now that I've been doing this for seven plus years and you know, I'm, it's not so crazy. It's, it's, it is. Uh, so, I mean, like when you say, you know, you're doing, you're seeing 20 some people a day and you're, you're, you're wrestling with them, MMA wrestling, obviously a lot of adjustments. That's what a lot of people associate chiropractic with, with yeah. spinal manipulation and joint adjustments yep. and things like that. How much of your practice is not that? I mean, are you adjusting everybody that walks in your office? Do you ever come in, does everybody come in and say, Hey, I've got it, this issue. And you say, well, we can treat it through these things or does everybody get an adjustment? Yes. So that's kind of what's changed about my perspective in the last, just in the last year of being in practice, people come in with severe autoimmune conditions or like very chronic low back pain. That's usually what you see sciatic pain. So I tell them, I'm like, Hey, you know, I can adjust you and I'm going to give you some relief. Sometimes we can get it to where, you know, they don't have any problems with that at all anymore. So very successful with that, or they have a radiculopathy in the arm, anything like that. A lot of times we can fix that. But if I can't get that to go away, just within a couple of visits, I'll tell them like, hey, we need to look a little bit deeper because this might be more than just, you know, you, you have an injury to that area and we can adjust it back to health. You know, sometimes it's inflammatory. So I see a lot of polyarthritis that's undiagnosed. And then a lot of, like I said, chronic low back pain, I think a lot of that can be can be uh, taken care of with a proper nutritional diet. So I made my own protocol, just kind of detailing what, what uh, the carnivore diet is. So I, I give that to almost every patient that comes through the door. And I tell them like, hey, if you don't want to be in here with these same problems, you know, and you actually want to fix yourself, you should probably consider doing something with your diet. Not a lot of people want to do that. 
they just want the quick and easy fix, but, and that's unfortunate, but as long as you plant that seed, that's kind of what I, that's my mentality with it. Yeah. There's, uh, obviously there's clearly some people want to do it because we have this community of thousands and right. thousands of people that are doing it and clearly they're seeing a yep. difference. And so, um, with it, with, within the, and I, I assume it, it varies by state to state, you know, as to what, how much purview chiropractic <laughs> is granted, you know, whether you can treat certain conditions or not, how is Ohio, yeah. can you, can you like treat, can you have a diabetic come to you in, in Ohio and say, Hey, I want chiropractic care for my diabetes. And you could, I mean, you could conceivably say, Hey, here's a nutritional solution. What, 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 yeah. what, what kind well, of, well, actually yeah. I, I do have a patient right now. He's completely reversed his diabetes. No. You can order blood work as a chiropractor. You cannot, you know, obviously you can't get into the medication side of things. You can, you can, uh, basically ask their primary care, like, Hey, can you get them off of this? Or, you know, so my one patient, he was, he had an A1C of like seven, something like that. Um, but he'd been carnivore for about three months, uh, took it down to, I was around five, I want to say maybe a 5.3, but I I'd imagine. So at his primary was amazed by that. Um, so he just said, keep doing what you're doing. Uh, but yeah, I had actually showed him kind of that, that side of things, like how to eat, um, and just go on the carnivore diet. But as far as, as managing someone's case, yeah, I mean, as long as they're willing to, to, uh, talk to their primary, if they want to get off of a medication or something like that, like a blood pressure med or a statin or something like that, those are the most common ones that I run into, you know, I'll, I'll tell them like, Hey, you don't have to be on that. Um, you know, I, I can't say like you should get off of that. And <laughs> that's, that's what I say. Uh, but you know, I, I just, I make recommendations more than anything. Yeah. I mean, you can't technically de-prescribe or prescribe, I assume. Is that, is that true? Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Correct. Yeah. That's, that's one of the limited, that's one of the, the powers that doctors have the power to prescribe prescriptions. And right. it's kind of like, it's kind of a, maybe a double-edged sword and you know, maybe it's right. And I had a buddy that I was, that I was in school with and he, he ended up, he ended up leaving halfway through chiropractic school because he wanted that, you know, he wanted to be able to prescribe medications or take people off their medications mm -hmm. without consulting anybody else, Yeah, which, yeah, you know, that would be, that'd be very nice, but <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, and you know, as, as I see literally people coming off medicines every single day, you know, and I'm just out I, here on social media talking about this stuff and getting people to, Hey, I got off my meds. Um, we are fortunately, uh, you know, in the middle of building our company out where we're going to be able to do that on a regular basis, which I'm pretty excited right. about. Um, let me ask you a little bit about more of your own personal, uh, sort of thing. So you said you, you know, you tried the fruit thing. It didn't work. You, you went yeah. more restrictive. You try to put some stuff back in. So what is, what does a diet look like for you currently? And how long you've been doing this now for what, six months or something, or how long you've been doing it? Uh, since March. So what's that? Not 10 it's December. So 12 months, months, nine eight, months. 11. Yeah. 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 Nine months yeah. So yeah. yeah, around that, around that amount of time. Um, so on the daily, what usually happens, I'll wake up. Um, I still do coffee. So I, I do cheat in that sense, I guess. Um, but, uh, it never gives me any problems usually that I've noticed. I was still able to kind of achieve my goals without cutting that out. I do that in the morning. I don't eat until about lunch. Uh, so I come home on my lunch break. And then I'll eat probably maybe a little over a pound of meat. I'll do ground beef. I'm trying to I'm trying to plug through my ground beef right now because I've got a ton of it. Mm -hmm. uh, so I've been doing that as of late. And then at night I'll I'll either do like a steak or uh, my wife will make a roast for us, something like that. So usually, like I said before, about two to three pounds of meat a day. Uh, but again, it just it pretty strictly red meat. Um, I'll do eggs on the occasion. I don't usually have any problems with that. Yeah. And, and then as far as, uh, I mean, are you focusing on protein fat percentages or how do you, how do you sort of, yeah. So I, that? I noticed when I did, um, when I had very fatty meals, like I'll, I'll eat like a brisket or something like that, um, or ribs, I like digestive, I, 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 I can't digest that high fat content yet. Like I, I guess I, I eat probably 80, 20, maybe 75, 35 burgers or 75, 25 burgers, excuse me. Um, 
And uh, those that usually sits pretty well and I feel satiated throughout the day. Um, I, I don't really have a desire to eat. I, I don't really measure like fat or protein content or anything like that. Um, I, I kind of just eat till I'm full. Uh, and I've been trying to eat more lately because I'm trying to put on a little, little more weight. Yeah. I mean, you said you'd fasted till you got like super skinny. I mean, where, how, how light yeah. did you get and where are you at now? And where, are you pretty, where are you at with your body composition? Are you staying fairly lean or what do you got? What's going on? Yeah. I, well, I, I was naturally born with a very, very fast metabolism. So that's, uh, my genetics are, they predispose me to being skinny, but, um, I, after I got married, I put on probably 40 pounds and that's when I started to do a little bit of intermittent fasting and an extended fast. And I got my weight down to like uh, what it was when I was in high school, which was like 170. I'm about 183, 185 now since I've been doing carnivore. So I was about 170 from the time I had done my fasting and all that until I started carnivore. So I put on about probably 13 pounds how, and yeah. I've stayed pretty steady at that. Yeah. How tall, how tall are you? Just six, three, six, three. Okay. So you're still, you're definitely not overweight. No, you know, you definitely no. not be used <laughs> to that. So very good. yeah, yeah. I've been, I, I'm pretty skinny, but, uh, yeah, I, I've, I've been trying to put on a little more weight, but yeah, I, it's just like, you just feel a lot stronger too, when you're, when you're eating this way. So I, I don't know if it's all mental or like why the heck that is, but I, I just feel like I don't get worn out. So like I could, I used to be, you know, pretty tired by the end of my, my Thursdays are my biggest day. I'll, I usually see anywhere from 30 to 40 sometimes 40 is a really busy day for me. Um, but at that point, like at the end of the day, I, I used to just be absolutely beat, but now like I could go out and do it for another couple hours. No problems. Yeah. So recovery and overall performance. What about mental cognitively? Are you feeling any difference yes. mentally? Yeah. Cognitively for sure. Um, lots of brain fog. I did have lots of brain fog before. And like I said, the headaches too, I would have a lot of headaches. Uh, I've noticed a lot more. I, I don't get as mad over the little things. You know, I, I still get angry over some stupid stuff, but you know, I, who doesn't in the moment, but I notice like less, less of that just being on edge, um, lots more calmness, um, as I've, as I've been on this. How about, uh, you know, is anybody noticed that you're doing this family, friends, other, <laughs> other chiropractors, anybody noticed that and thought this yeah. is bizarre? <laughs> My, uh, the, the other chiropractor I work with, he thinks I'm going to die. So he's like, you're going to get doubt and gout and <laughs> you're going to die. And I'm like, all right, now I got to do it long term just to prove a point. <laughs> but I, I, I talk, I talk about it a lot. Um, so, you know, anytime you're just eating meat and you don't eat what else is around, everybody asks questions or you bring your own meat to an event, everybody asks a question. So it kind of gets annoying, but at the same time, I'm like, I, I really enjoy talking about it because it's just, I mean, it's changed my life. It's, it's seriously, I, I didn't know I could feel this good. Uh, you know, I'm only 27 and you're not really supposed to feel that bad when you're this young, but it's like, I, I feel like I did when I was 16 years old. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's maybe even better. Yeah. I mean, it's interesting because you may, you may not even know, I mean, you don't even know how no. good you can feel. And it's just kind of like, you exactly. kind of accept it's a normal thing that so many people spend their whole lives in this sort of state of, uh, you know, just, you know, basically suboptimal, some optimal health, I guess that's the best way right. to put it. And know? it's kind of like a, it's like a slow fade into that too. Like it, from birth, I mean, we're, we're put on some sort of medication or I, at least most people are, that's how it was for me. I was on a medication always, uh, as far like with my asthma and stuff. Luckily I did not do any topical steroids for my eczema. I had it a little bit when I was younger, but it got more severe as I, as I got older and got stressed out, but did not have any topical steroidal withdrawal. But like you said, I mean, you don't, you just don't realize because you, you kind of come to accept like, oh, well, this is just normal. And that's, that's what's supposed to happen. You're supposed to break down. So I fully intend on doing it for the rest of my life. I really appreciate the diet and, and the work you do, man. Like you're just, 
you're out there preaching the good word, brother. I appreciate it. Yeah, I do feel like a preacher sometimes. It's kind of fun. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm, not very, I'm not. I'm not a particularly religious person, but I, it does feel like that to some degree. But it's it's kind of. Uh, you know, there's a, such a dearth of, of information out there, and it's it's good that, it, that more and more phys- – and it seems like – I don't know why, maybe – it seems like I've seen a lot of chiropractors, you know, I mean, relatively speaking, maybe even more so than MDs that, that adopt this diet. Why do you think that is? There's this open mind, I guess, to to just try that. It's it's very logical. Like, I don't know, There's there's not many – if you're a chiropractor, you're basically swimming upstream. Like it's a very, it's a very misunderstood profession and you're also kind of weird usually. Um, but, but I don't know. I think there's like this open-mindedness and just less dogma to overcome as far as like, if you run into somebody who's a nutritionist, they are, they're set in their ways. Um, and, and also like, uh, like, uh, a medical doctor too, they, they're, they're also very set in their ways and, you know, they're, they're going to think, Hey, this is only, this is only solvable with medication. Chiropractic comes from the standpoint of, you know, the power that made the body heals the body. So we are, uh, we are innately able to heal ourselves. And that's kind of the basis for chiropractic. And if, correct me if I'm wrong, but most chiropractic practitioners are, are kind of self-employed. They're usually, they're, yes. they're not attached. They're not employed by a big chiropractic hospital system or anything like that. So you tend right. to be very independent of these other facilities. Is that fair to say? That's correct. I'm, I'm an independent contractor with, uh, or I'm going to be at the, at the beginning of the new year with, um, the fellow I'm working with. Um, but he's, uh, it, it's very, it's very independent outside of, it's not like a physical therapy or anything like that. You're basically, like I said, you're swimming upstream. Mm-hmm. So you're kind of doing your own thing because there's not really any, there's no hospital system that really wants to take you in. Um, you know, even though a lot of times the chiropractors will be the, they'll be the grand slam um, opportunity that somebody's looking for. You know, they've, they've gone to hundreds of different places to try and deal with their low back pain or their neck pain or anything like that. And usually we could fix them up within a couple of visits. Uh, so it's a great, I, I think the mentality should be, it should be portal of entry, you know, uh, it should be where people start for their musculoskeletal problems. And if it can't be solved there, then we look deeper into either nutrition or if they're not into that, you know, send them on to a surgical situation. Yeah. So I obviously try to avoid that, the latter of that, but yeah, I mean, obviously, as as a, someone trained as a surgeon, I mean, we took care of a lot of, and some of it's absolutely appropriate for it. I mean, you get somebody with you know broken bone, it's needs surgery, you got to fix them somehow, right? right. I mean, there's right, uh, exactly. Um, there is uh, uh, as far as um, you know, you said you discuss with some of your patients nutrition. How do you select those that are going to be doing? How how do you get? Them, what's your what's your success rate or do you have any are you using anything any props or tools or resources to help to to facilitate because i know when i was in practice i didn't have time i mean i literally had five six minutes with a patient it's really really difficult to you know get this uh, conversation started and going and actually get anything there so i was just like here's a handout please take a look at this and it's not really it's not really effective way to do it but it's the best you have and so how do you do that how do you deal with that right so i do i spend probably I would say maybe 15 minutes with each of my patients. If it's somebody who just wants to get adjusted and get out of there, you know, you, you kind of have to, you have to meet the patient where they're at a lot of times in chiropractic. So if they're there for the, the emotional connection or they want to have a conversation with you, you, you spend a little more time with them. But other times, you know, you can get somebody in and out within five minutes just because they want to get adjusted and get on with their day. Um, but I would say, if they talk to me about like any autoimmune condition, that is always a great way to kind of start that conversation because I, and I'll make time for them too. If, if that's, if that's the case, like, you know, even if I have a waiting room full of people, I, because that that's very important and I'll, I'll go, I like, like you said, I have a little flyer that you kind of, you give to them. So I've printed out my own protocol and like, you know, what, what you can do. I don't, I don't charge them anything for that. Or, you know, I don't do like consultations, but usually it's throughout the visit. 
that I'll, I'll explain this to them and like kind of get, get plant that seed and get them started on that, that conversation. Um, but it, it's so hard. I feel like the hardest, uh, the hardest conversation to convince people of is that their pain levels are directly related to what they're ingesting. Like, okay, yeah, your knee hurts. How, do, how the heck does that translate to what I'm eating? So, you know, I, I try to explain that as easy as possible, um, but it can be a little bit detail, you know, a detail oriented explanation. So uh, again, like you said, it just takes a little bit of time, but I try to make time for those situations because I genuinely want to see people get better. I don't want to see them in, in my office, you know, for obviously, you know, for every week for the rest of their life just because they're hurting so bad. So I, I genuinely want to see people get better. How much of your practice do you see? I mean, does obesity play a role in, in what you see as far as musculoskeletal oh, yeah. pathology or, or, or a large percentage of your patients sure. tend to be on the obese side or how does that look? Yes. And I, <laughs> it's also a very hard conversation to have with them because they're asking why their back and their knees hurt. It's like, well, you know, you're 300 pounds. So <laughs> That might play a role in it somewhat, but the the fellow I mentioned before who had he was diabetic, he had uh, you know he he was he had done it for weight loss purposes, um, and that that's kind of what what he started on the journey for is to lose weight, you know. But I, I try to encourage him as far as like what our goals should be as far as us getting healthy first, and then then the weight kind of falls off. So getting healthy is the first thing we should losing that that extra fat around our organs um getting our a1c down like that's that's kind of where we want to start at that's the good first goal to have and then the weight kind of follows after that like i know when i was operating on obese people it, it was just harder i mean it was just technically harder yeah. to you know you you're when you do an incision there's it's harder to see what yep. you're doing because there's so much excess adipose tissue in the way and and, and yep. It, you yep. know, it was just harder to visualize things. You had to have these special retractors brought in. I mean, are, is it harder to manipulate people when they're, yes. when they're very big? Yeah, for sure. Especially if someone, you know, if they've got a lot of extra fat around their, uh, around their glutes, it's like a lot of the work you do is on the SI joints. So it's kind of hard to find out where exactly you're, you're contacting a lot of times. Um, you get, you get better at it, but <laughs> I thought that was kind of, a difficult thing to overcome at first, just because everyone I worked on in school, you know, everyone's very fit, very healthy, you know, so you don't run into that, you know, like actual real world situations until you're either in your preceptorship or you're adjusting people in the real world. So yeah, definitely tougher. You're more limited in what you can do. Yeah. One of, I mean, one of the things, and maybe it's just my perception because I always ran into the athletes, but it seems like, and correct me if I'm wrong, but many people in chiropractic school are tend to like physical fitness. They tend to be physically fit. Is that a fair? Yes. Uh, yes. Assessment? Very much so. I mean, there was probably only, I would say 10% of my class that I graduated with was like not healthy. Like you look at them and they're, you know, they're overweight or anything like that. Or maybe like ten percent. Yeah, I mean, so it's well, very yeah, disproportionate. Most, most people are going to be in their twenties, I would imagine. You know, so they're still relatively young. But I, I would say it's fair to say in medical school, you have a significant percentage of the medical incoming students now that are that are unhealthy and often, you know, often right. dealing with obesity. And it's just kind of we've gotten this. It's kind of unfortunate that we have so many people in there and we've got physicians now that are just promoting obesity. They're like the fat acceptance doctor. And it's just like, don't weigh me. It's not <laughs> important. It's not a risk yeah. factor, which is complete nonsense in my view. But um, we're, we're seeing quite a bit of that. Um, do, do you, uh, you know, do you guys have, uh, I, I know when I was a physician, we had a lot of people from the pharmaceutical companies dropping by to drop off treats for the office staff or bring us hey. lunch or it was always kind of, you know, pizza and donuts and whatever. I, I made them actually one, I remember one time I said, Hey, bring me barbecue and you know, bring me meat. <laughs> I actually did that, which is kind of <laughs> nice. So I, I, as I got later in there, I was like, just bring, bring a bunch of, you know, Rudy's barbecue. I remember we would get a bunch of brisket and stuff like that. But, yeah. um, is that, does that infiltrate the chiropractic? I'm sure there's, you've got ben beds oh, yeah. and manipulation tools. Are, are you, are, is there an industry part of that where they do that as well? 
Well, for sure. I see a lot of Amish patients too. Um, they're, they're rather unhealthy as a community, just in what they eat. Really? What, are they, what are they eating? Because most people, most of us think, they, well, the Amish, they don't, they, they're no electricity, right. they're horse and buggy, know, they're doing right? manual labor. What are they eating? Well, and I think that saves them a lot of times, but you can tell a lot uh, just based on uh, the manual labor is what saves them is what I'm saying. Um, but a lot of them, they, they don't have good dental hygiene. Like mo- they're, they have a very carbohydrate rich diet. I mean, a lot of sweets too, that if you go to any Amish store, like most of them have bulk sweets and bulk treats and they, they usually bring those to us. So, you know, I, I take them and, you know, you don't want to be a douche and like, oh, I don't eat that. <laughs> so I just say thank you. And, you know, I, I put it to the side. A lot of times they, they'll eat, you know, they do eat a lot of meat. So, that, you know, that's good. And they usually have their own chickens. So they're eating a lot of eggs. Unfortunately, they add in all the extra crap too. So lots of sugar, lots of pies, cakes, sweet treats, and, you know, you name it. So a lot of times that's... uh that's a problem that we'll run into with the Amish is uh, that they just, you know, that they, they kind of eat themselves into a lot of problems. But everybody does. I mean, everybody's eating yeah. themselves into, into, you know, like I said, we're all digging our, our graves with our forks, you know, a kind of type of thing. Exactly. And uh, what, uh, you know, as far as, uh, you know, do you foresee any, you know, significant changes in the way you practice now that you've discovered that, nutrition has such a probably a more important role than maybe you thought before how do you foresee yeah. i mean are you looking at maybe trying to facilitate this a little more yeah most definitely i mean i would love i'd love to be at the point you know uh, as you you probably have maybe 25 good years of practicing where you can like you know you can really give it your all and you can give the patient a really good adjustment before you start wearing down. Now that's the, that's the stereotypical average Joe chiropractor. That's not a carnival chiropractor. So <laughs> maybe I could be the exception of the rule, but um, yeah, a lot of times they're just, they, they have a lot of arthritis in their hands as, as they're older. So they want to transition more into consultation, supplementation, uh, ancillary sale of, you know, of products in your practice rather than adjusting. I don't necessarily want to, I really don't even hardly sell any supplements anymore because you know, the the supplement companies kind of pissed me off. Uh, But that was one of your, that was one of your questions too. Uh, That, that was it. It was uh, the pharmaceutical companies drop off stuff. The the supplement companies do that as well. So it's kind of like a, it's like a mirror image almost of how the pharmaceutical companies behave. There's big money in those supplements. Um, as far as, you know, as far as them, you know, trying to influence which supplement you're going to sell. So they oftentimes will bring uh, a rep in and we'll get, you know, we'll get talked to similar to probably how they do it in pharmaceutical industry. Yeah, there's, and then I think I, I feel for people that try to do functional medicine or anything, you know, because, you know, right. as a physician, you're, you're put in, you know, as an allopathic physician, you're put in this system, which is. I mean, that, that pathway is set in stone. You're going to be doing procedures. Yeah. You're going to be prescribing pills and everything, all the electronic medical record, everything is geared for you to do that. And if you try to step yeah. out of side of the system, not only do you become less efficient, you don't get paid as much and you lose income. And so it's very, it's, it's, right. it's disincentivizing, you know, it's cause like, you know, you train for however many years. I mean, I went, I went to school for 13 years to, to do orthopedics. I mean, it was just right. four years of medical school five years or four years of college and five years of residency. So yep. you're kind of sucked into that, you know, you're like, okay, I'm going to stay yep. in that system and to step out of outside of that. It's like, it's, it's financially very, very uh, challenging. Right, and and so it's easy to seek, to get into the supplement trap or get into the lab, draw right. a bunch of labs. And it's just, it's, are you, is that something you, do you guys deal with labs much? Are you doing lab work as much? Uh, the, the fellow I work with, he, de- he deals more in blood work and lab. Um, I'd like to get in, uh, eventually I, I focus, I had talked to a fellow, um, he was an older chiropractor and he's like in the first, you know, first three to five years, he's like, just focus on adjusting, get good at adjusting and then start to focus on, you know, blood work, 
management of other conditions outside of stuff that you can deal with chiropractically. So yeah, I, I think eventually I'll get into the blood work side of things. I share a lot of the same sentiments with you. It's it's like, what do we really know about blood work? You know, is it, it's just a snapshot in time. Like you said before, my wife, she had, we went to a functional doctor. Or he was like a, he was like holistic medicine guy. We spent, it was like $3,000 before he did any analyzation. Yeah. Yeah. It was all like, you know, the stool sample testing, blood testing, every freaking test in the book. And he didn't, he was like, yep, yeah, I don't know. So <laughs> that, yeah, that kind of pissed me off. Yeah, I, I, I see some yeah, of that, f- that kind of formed my opinion on some I, of that stuff. I, I do well. see some of that functional medicine, medicine stuff. And they'll, they'll literally, it's, like you said, $3,000 allows for they even see you. Yeah. What are you, what are you, exactly what are you here what for? Was. What are you here for? I, I broke my foot. Oh, well, we got $3,000 yeah. <laughs> labs that don't have any. I mean, they don't even examine the patient, take a history before they start ordering all these labs. Yeah. I think I think it's a ridiculous business model. I mean, it probably makes sense from a business model, but it doesn't make sense from a health. Exactly. You know, yeah. Health and model. it's like that, that, that really eats at me. Like, I don't think I could sleep at night doing that to people. So, you know, maybe he has gotten people better and I don't want to crap on his, his practice, but the way he handled our situation, and I'm sure he's handled a few other people's that way. Uh, I I feel like you know he could have found, he could have found the problem without having to do all that. So, you know, he, he was just like, "Don't eat peanut butter." Was pretty much the, uh, the <laughs> that was the surmise of his uh, entire blood work panel. That's what he came up with. <laughs> do you is there is there much of a uh... I guess lifestyle component car. I mean, is there like a, I mean, obviously you've got, I'm sure you've got state and national organizations for that represent chiropractors across the country. Is yes. there, is there any kind of plant-based influence pushing down on you guys at all? Well, they did. I, no, not yet. I feel like they could, you know, and they try to start pulling this climate crap about, you know, how, it's unsustainable. They they'll probably go on board with that because they were all on board with all the COVID stuff too. You know, we don't have to get into that, but it was uh, it was a little discouraging in that sense because you know you you, you preach you, the body's capable of healing itself, and then you start you, know, you start buying into that stuff. But I, my nutritionist, she was like, "What is it when you eat fish only, and then you're mostly p- Pesca- pescatarian?" Yeah, yeah, pescatarian. Yeah, she was that. Uh, so she was very slanted towards that, but the nutritionist before her, he was, you know, he was like, yeah, eat red meat. That's fine. But I, I feel like it was encouraged that you should eat your vegetables. Uh, that was definitely implied. And like, you know, they, they talk about all these great micronutrients there in vegetables. It's like, Oh, look at, look at all the vitamins in a carrot. It's like, well, I need 600 of them to get the actual amount that I need my RDA. So as opposed to one piece of steak. So I, I, you know, none of it's bioavailable for you. Um, and that was something I, I found out the hard way because it just made so much sense when you were like on the podcast, you were saying, um, have you ever found like a bit of meat in your poop? (laughs) I was like, you know, no, (laughs) I I found quinoa. I found freaking corn and I've had, you know, bowel movements the size of Texas when I'm eating very fibrous, rich diet, you know, three times a day. But, you know, at, at this point, it's like, you know, not to get too personal, but it's just very regular. It's once a day, if that, and there's, it's small, like there's minimal waste. So it just makes so much sense. Man. Yeah. It's, uh, <laughs> it's interesting how, when you just apply some common sense and common observations that some of these things make sense, it's, you know, it's interesting. And, and many people don't know this, but well, people that have had this happen to them, there are a lot of people out there that don't have a colon, you know, they've had a colon removed for various, right. various reasons and mm-hmm. they do. Okay. I mean, they live fine. I mean, many of them live normal right. length and now they've got, you know, they've got a colostomy or an ostomy that they've got to deal with. But I mean, as far as their life expectancy and their overall health, Generally, right. they do pretty well unless it was due to cancer, and then, they're, then you have the recurrence of cancer. But I mean, generally, if somebody has their colon out for, say, ulcerative colitis, many of them can live a long, natural life. So to say that you need the plants and the fiber to do anything, it's like, well, what about these people right. who don't even have colons that live? So it's it's clear that we can right. we can get everything we need from our small intestine, and and what's absorbed in our small intestine will meat and fat for sure. I mean, obviously some. 
very rapidly uh, uh, absorbable, you know, uh, uh, concentrated sh- simple sugars can, can also be absorbed. Yeah. But I mean, as far as uh, you know, saying that we need this fiber and this all this complex carbs, which basically are activated on by the by the microbiome and the colon, is this is not true because we can live without a colon. So it's kind of an interesting well, observation. And, yeah, and you look at these people who are on these plant based high fiber diets. It's like their gut looks ridiculous. They're so bloated. It's insane. Like I, I have zero bloating. I don't even fart ever. Like it, it's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's something a lot of people notice on, you know, I mean, it makes sense. You're just not, you just don't have the fermentable food that's hitting your, hitting your colon. So you, you just don't really produce too much gas. So it's kind of, kind of right. interesting. I know. So I, I've tried to talk, I have one patient. He's uh, I've been working on him for a long time, like trying to get him on this and he's, he's just set in his ways about being high fiber and you know, I I'm healing my gut and I'm sealing it with high fiber and yeah. this, that, and the other. And he keeps breaking down. Like he's had hernias. He's had, he's had major IBS problems just, and, and they keep reoccurring. So mm. I'm about to make a bet with him and be like, Hey, if this happens again, you got to try my meat diet for a month. <laughs> <laughs> good luck. Good luck with that. Some people are, right. <laughs> some people will do it. Some won't, you know, it's just one of those things. I know. And, you know I, I know. That's, so that's, that's kind of, that's the, my the fortunate yeah, thing is there's just more and more people trying it. And, and everyone that, you know, the more people that try it, the more people have success and it's a pretty high rate. So, um, we, yeah. Josh, unfortunately we're running out of time. Are you, are you, do you do a social media type thing? Or is there any one place you want to direct? Yeah, I have, to? Uh, I have, uh, an Instagram, uh, okay. Dr. Joshua real is what i'm listed what, under that's r-e-e-l and i have i have a post on there about tell me your, my progression on the carnivore diet tell me your instagram again is dr josh real joshua josh ooh, uh and then real r-e-a-r-w-l yeah. r-e-e-l two e's yes dr josh i found you there you go i'm gonna follow you there Hey, All thanks, right, man. I, I got you. It. I see your picture of your uh, your your eczema there. You should put up a follow up picture next, to, or maybe you have one. Maybe I can see that. So yeah, I, yeah, I do. You do. I, oh, you do. Yeah, hey, you got a bunch of them. Yeah, cool. Well, we'll just have to share that across the world. Let people know. Here's eczema versus carnivore. Cool. Thank yeah. you very much for coming on and, and sharing this, and thank you for being open minded enough to try this and and sharing it with your patients. Like I said, this is how we we uh, change the world. I think one 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 step at a time. I don't think you know we're not going to have the American Medical Association promoting carnivore anytime soon. So we no, gotta, we got to do it ourselves. We have to do it outside of them. Got to do it ourselves. All right, guys. Everybody, thank hey. you so much. We'll, we'll be back yeah, tomorrow so morning. Much, Sean. All right, thanks, you guys. Bye, bye. Yeah, we'll see you. Take care. Hey folks, it's Dr. Sean Baker here. If you guys are enjoying these success stories, well, you can become your own success story. You can do that by heading over to carnivore.diet. You can sign up for a free 30-day trial and get started today. We're looking forward to supporting you. Our community is wonderful, and we'd love to see your success.